Hello everyone, today's topic is manage pathogenesis and the management of placenta previa. Last class we already discussed about the placenta previa and its cause and the types of placenta previa. In this video we will learn about pathogenesis and the management of the placenta previa. So before we are going to know about the pathogenesis, so we have to give a look on the placenta previa. What is placenta previa? So placenta, placenta previa, it is the abnormal placenta, placenta which is implanted in the lower uterine segment. Okay. So according to the positions, it is also given different different names. One is total placenta previa, next one is partial placenta previa and another one is marginal placenta previa. And also we discussed in the last class that what are the risk factors that cause placenta previa. So, the previous history of caesarean section, the woman mother having previously caesarean sections. So, there is a more chance of placenta previa and also multiple gestations, maternal smoking, smoking like uh, using cocaine. So, that also cause placenta previa in pregnancy and also previous history of placenta previa. Suppose the mother is delivered once uh, previous deli uh, delivered the fetus uh, on placenta previa, so that there is a ne next chance for the pregnancy, there will be chance of what placenta previa. And sometimes elderly primigrade, those mother who is at a, at a late, a, late uh, marriage or uh, they are going to be delivered at a elderly time, so there is a also chance of placenta previa and multiple parity. Okay, so these are the six factors that cause placenta previa. So according to the positions, they are named as total, partial, and the marginal. Okay, so it is uh, it is diagnosed in the antenatal period. So mother who is going to the antenatal checkup uh, around 18 to 20 weeks on the per abdominal uh, ultrasonography. It's, uh, it's we know from that investigations we know that the placenta position. Okay. One of the important thing is that those mother who are detected placenta previa at the age of 18 to 20, 20 weeks in the later means third trimester around their placenta position is changes. Okay, this is the called migration of the placenta previa. So what is migrations? So migrations means the the placenta which is in the lower uh, suppose it is in the marginal positions and it is a distance very near to the internal os. So, as the first trimester, so that time what happened? The lower uterine, the, the growth of the lower uterus and lower segment is takes place. Okay, so it's cause elongation of the lower uterine segment. Okay, so due to the elongations or the excessive growth in the lower uterine segment, so it the placenta, placenta remain in the upper side. So placenta, the position changes. So, it is away from the internal os. Okay. Sometimes those who are diagnosed in the 18 to 20 weeks placenta previa in the later third trimester, if you go for the for, for the another uh, ultrasonography, we find that the placenta is away from the uh, internal os that is more than 2 cm. Okay. So, um, most of the cases like type 1 and type 2 anterior, type 2 anterior that case it is solves uh, by uh, by its own okay so this is a uh, this is the uh, called placental immigrations so the stretching of the lower uterine segment of the uterus during the first trimester okay so there is just two chances one thing is that more chance is placenta migration so that the stretching elongate the space look the stretching elongate the space the space is now increasing and between the cervix and the placenta, relocating the lower edge of the placenta away from the cervix. Now see the placenta is away, it is far from the internal os. So that is the placental migration. And it is also resolved by its own. This uh, mainly it is fine in type 1 and type 2 anterior placenta previa. Okay. And the second chance is that sometimes the stretching cell there is no no relocations or the no changes uh, in the placenta and it persists his positions it remain constant through the first trimester what happens in that case the if the pregnancy go to the liver towards liver so there will be thinning of the lower uterine segment as i told there is a elongation process takes place so that the lower uterine segment become thin as if previously as it is thick in layer now in the third trimester is due to the growth of the lower uterine segment that is the thinning of the 
lower uterine segment and also if the time is advanced to going to the labor so the contractions will be take place and the third reason is that the cervix become thin cervix become if fast so during the time of labor during that uh, when the baby is going to be delivered that time the cervix is ripen or the if fast okay so these three factors okay so these six factors give a shearing force so what is shearing force means these three factors give a pressure to the placental implantation side look the placenta is implanted here so due to the three factor okay one is the elongation of the lower uterine thinning of the lower uterine segment second was the uterine contractions and the third one is the cervix thinning so these three factors what happens this gives shearing force so that there is a detachment takes place so due to the detachment so bleeding takes place okay so this is all about pathogenesis why the bleeding takes place and one thing is that in the placenta pvr there is painless vaginal bleeding occur okay so due to this three factors sharing force to the placenta attachment site then painless bleedings occur due to the bleedings there is a risk of fat hemorrhage takes place and also another thing is happen so if there is a bleeding takes place so there is a lack of oxygen supply to the tissues of this area that's why due to the tissue uh, oxygen so insufficiency of the uh, oxygen in the uh, tissue that cause injury so in that area in which area there is a injury takes place that area activation of the intracellular g protein so a, one of the protein that is activate in the injured tissue and that release number of calcium that is present in the intracellular into the fat the uh, injured area okay due to the release of calcium into the uh, release of the calcium so there is what contractions take place so there is pain the contractions that result in uterine pain okay so by this all things by this three factors this uh, the, uh, the placenta the previa patients bleeding takes place and and also the bleeding will be painless and with some uh, what uh, the contraction will be started is the time uh, is the is the uh, what the when the detachment occur in the placenta site so this is all about what pathogenesis of the placenta pvr after knowing this pathogenesis of the placenta pvr we have give a look to the complications what are the complication arises due to the placenta pvr there is a complications both in the maternal side and the fetal side so in maternal side in the three times but it's also affect in the antenatal time during pregnancy and in the time of delivery intranatal and sometimes uh, there is a there is uh, give uh, if adverse effect on the postpartum time also and also in the fetal side what happens due to the detachment or the bleeding or the hemorrhage so the supply of the oxygen or the nutrient to the baby is decreases that leads to intrauterine growth retardations and sometimes we find the baby is uh, iud also that is a fit intrauterine death okay these are the what complications that arises both in mother side and the fetal side so knowing all these complications of the fetal and the maternal fetal and the maternal so how how we manage the patients so if you a patient come to hospital with bleeding so first we admitted the patients uh, on the hospital so after admissions we have to check what is the general conditions of the feet of the mother and the abdominal exam examination to be done and the clinical assessment of the blood loss okay one thing is that in placenta pvr no internal examination should be done because if uh, as we are not known about the position of the placenta so if you go for internal examination there will be more chance of bleeding so only the abdominal examination will be carry on and physical the clinical assessment as you know of the amount of bleeding the color of the bleeding from that we can calculate the blood loss okay if there is a blood if if there is a find the mother is having more loss of blood then we can go for hemoglobin test one of the hemoglobin test will be take out uh, carried out and also grouping and cross matching should be done if uh, if any emergency situation arises during the labor so we will be prepared with the two units of blood so before when the patient is come to the hospital we have to do following things and also trans abdominal examination should be done trans abdominal ultrasound should be done 
for the confirmation of what the locations of the placenta okay this is the general general uh, management that we do if a patient come to the hospital after all these examinations if you find the fetus uh, the maternal pro, pro, maternal condition is good then we go for another management there is a two manage, two steps in the management one is the expected treatment and the active interference so expected treatment is that when we find this general condition is good so and we allow the pregnancy for 37 completed weeks we expect the mother to be continue his pregnancy up to what completed 37 weeks or 38 weeks why we take the 37 weeks because 37 weeks in that period the fetal lungs is matured okay so that if you go for delivery after 37 weeks the fetus can alive in the outer world okay so we expect the pregnancy to be continue up to 37 completed weeks don't be hurry for the uh, delivery of the flesh delivery of the baby so in the expected treatment if the pregnancy is 36 less then we allow the pregnancy up to 38 weeks if you do when we apply if there is no active bleeding is found and the fetal heart sound is good then we uh, allow the pregnancy up to 38 weeks after 38 weeks uh, then uh, we do what induction of labor we go for the inductions of labor and it is uh, all it is take it is done by the double set of examination so what is double set of examination it is the um, it is the examinations uh, that is carried out in the ot of, as we known the patient is placenta previa so there is two teams management teams are there one is if there is by chance during the time of internal examination there is uh, severe bleeding will be take place so that case one management team will be control, control the uh, bleeding blood loss manage the blood loss and the sec if uh, the situation is uh, not under control then we go for immediately cesarean section so that is called double set of examinations okay if uh, double set, in this double set of examinations if uh, type 1 and type 2 because the type 1 and type 2 anterior has a less adversely effect to the, uh, the uh, mother and during the time of labor so in that case we go for artificial rupture of membrane and we start oxytocin as uh, the injections to the in the iv fluid for in for uh, what the successive contraction of the uterus so after giving this the after uh, taking this type of uh, interference like arm and uh, giving oxytocin injections if the progress means if the contraction will be progress and without any bleeding then we allow for vaginal delivery okay and after giving suppose after arm and oxytocin drips bleeding is the, pro, the contraction is not going any progress and the bleeding will be continue so that time that time we don't worry uh, don't uh, wait for the uh, normal delivery we immediately go for cesarean sections and sometimes the baby is malformed okay that is detected on the ultrasonography if you find the baby is malformed or uh, dead so that case we go for instrumental delivery so that the ventus and forceps you apply by this form the baby will be delivered to the seasonal uh, normal way and sometimes uh, in the type 2 posterior in the type 3 and type 4 they are taken as a major major problem because these three uh, are if you if we confirm by the trans abdominal uterine ultrasonography the placenta is type 2 posterior in type 3 and type 4 in that case we not uh, we not uh, go for we not take chance for the normal delivery we go for cesarean sections okay so these are all about what uh, the treatment that is the expected treatment and then what in active interference the active interference says if the patient is coming to the hospital we have already checked the general conditions and find out the clinical assessment blood grouping hb ultrasonography to confirm that the placenta positions then if the pregnancy is more than 38 weeks okay and pressure is in liver means there is contractions is already inside uh, in inside the patients and bleeding will be continue okay in that case we don't wait uh, we don't wait for any uh, uh, any uh, what uh, any management we immediately go for cesarean section okay that is called active interference and here what expected treatment so this is all about what management of placenta previa 
I hope you uh, understood all these things from the, my video and uh, for more video please subscribe my channel.